84. Notice how we're getting the positive. If you look back up here, these negatives are going to pair up at some time. Do you see what I'm talking about? Somewhere they're going to pair up and make a positive out of that. Let's compare that to this one. How many negatives do you have? Three. Is that an odd or an even number of negatives? Odd. One, three, five, seven, those are odd numbers. So this has an odd number of negatives. Here's what would happen. Think about this before we actually do the, the math on it. Can you see that these two negatives will pair up and give you a positive, but this one will never pair up with anything? It'll stay negative. That means that my product at the end is going to become a negative. You with me on this? Okay. Even if you worked it out just the way it goes, we go, okay, this is negative 4 times negative 2. That's, that's positive 8. But I still have a negative 5. Notice how that negative 5 has nothing to pair up with. So at the very end, we'll have a negative 40. So just by looking at the number of negatives you have, you're immediately able to determine whether you're going to have a positive or a negative answer. Let's try a couple on your own and see what we get out of this stuff. So, try this one. around the room. If you need help on this stuff, let me know and I will help you. And I wrote that, what we just talked about up on the board. If you have an even number of negatives, your product will be positive. That's because they'll pair up. Two by two, they'll pair up and give you positives. If you have an odd number of negatives, your product will be negative. That's because maybe a couple will pair up, but you'll always have one hanging out at the end that will make it negative at the very end. So with that in mind, we're going to do these problems. Before we even start multiplying, we've got to look at the signs and see whether we're going to have positives or negatives. First one, how many negatives do we have? Four. Are we going to have a positive or a negative answer? Positive. Sure, because we have four of them. They're going to pair up. Yeah, it's an even number of negatives. We'll get a positive answer. We just have to multiply three times two times one times seven. So I know we're going to get 42. Did you get positive 42? Yes. Good, okay. 
Next one, we got negative 9, negative 4, negative 2. That has how many negatives in there? Three. Two will pair up, but we'll have one extra one. So our answer, our product, will be negative. We just have to multiply 9 times 4 times 2. That's 36 times 2, or 72. So negative 72. Okay, next up, we only have two negatives. They will pair up to give us a positive. We just have to multiply 8 times 6 times 2. You're going to get 96 out of that. And lastly, we're back to four negatives. Uh, do you get the idea between the, I don't want to do like seven negatives. Do you understand the, the interpretation of that, right? You keep going with this? Okay, good. So we have four negatives. That will give us a positive or negative, ladies and gentlemen. Positive. Very good. We multiply. We get 15 times 4 times 1. That's going to give us 60. We're, we're good. How many were four on four on that? Including the signs. Good. The signs are the important part there. Now, before we get to division, we do have to talk about repeated multiplication. That means some exponents, just for a little while. What's that mean? So the same number, whatever it is, times itself. Are we going to get negative 12 out of this? Okay, so we're going to we're going to get what we said here. Say that one more time louder. Why? Okay. So when we square that negative number, what we're doing is we're taking a negative times itself. Remember that squaring that multiplies whatever's inside that parentheses times itself. So anytime you square a negative. I hope you're listening here. Anytime you square a negative, is your answer going to be positive or negative? Positive. Always. If you square something, it's going to be positive, for sure, if it's in the parentheses. One thing I do need to point out to you right now, I know I just said that, but you need to see a difference um, between these two things. This is a little bit beyond our class, but I want you to see it right now because I don't want you to make this mistake, okay? So many of you have probably never seen this before. I need you to understand that this is different than this. Those are different answers. This answer in no way equals 36. That does not equal 36. Okay, here's the reason why. When you look at this as like an order of operations, what do you do first? Do you multiply first or do you do exponents first? Exponents. Shall we say exponents, I hope, right? Or operations is PEMDOS, parentheses, exponents, and multiplication, division. This negative, if it's not in parentheses, listen carefully to what I'm saying, please. Don't put your cell phones away, just listen. Um, if it's not in parentheses, what it means is that this is essentially like negative one times 6 squared. That's what it means if it's not in parentheses. Are you seeing the difference there? This says, oh, I have negative 1 times 36. That's negative 36. It's not positive 36. So how do you tell what to do and when to do it? If you have parentheses around the negative, it's the negative is included in that square. If you do not have parentheses around the negative, you don't square the negative. Your result is negative. Is the exponent ever inside the parentheses? It could be. Like that, you mean? Yeah. If it's like that, you are in that situation. Got it. Okay. So if, if you had the two like that, you are not here anymore. You're not there. Okay. This one, listen, listen folks, this one means this. This one means this. That's what that one means. Keep your eye on the difference between those two for me, would you? That way when you get to your, your homework and your test and I give you something like this, which I, I definitely will, um, you know when that negative gets squared and when it doesn't. It's, it's not hard to tell. It's just whether it's in the parentheses or not. Okie dokie. How many people understood that? 
Good. Okay. Let's try a couple more together. Really get the hang of it. I'll have you do some on your own. Then we'll start talking about division. Negative 3 to the third power, or negative 3 cubed. Negative 3 cubed. My question is, is this negative going with the exponent or not? What do you think? Yes. Is it within the parentheses? Then yeah, it is. So what this problem means right now is this means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. The negative is carried along with it because it's in the parentheses. Do you see the difference between something like this and something like that? hope you do. What's our answer here? Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Negative Good. Sure, we have three negatives. That's going to give us a negative. How about negative 2 to the fifth? Negative 2 to the fifth. Is that negative going to be with every single 2 that we're about to write? What do you think? Is the negative in the parentheses? So my question to you, and hopefully you, you're starting to see this. Look at the board here with me. Is it like this? Or is it like this? Yeah. Which one? Top one, bottom one? If this had been in parentheses, like this, that would be true. Negative two, this says, look at the parentheses, it groups it. It says this one would be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 5 times. This one says, this one says this. Look, look at the board. Cover it up. Write 2 to the 5th, and then take the opposite. So this says the opposite of 2 to the 5th. This one says negative 2 to the 5th. It's a different way of writing. It's a different expression altogether. So this one is not right. That one is. That's what we want. Hey, what's our answer here? Negative 32. Good. You get that by 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Make it negative. Here we go. I'd like you to try just three on your own. Let's make sure we get these right. I'll be walking around. If you are not getting this, raise your hand. Let me help you right now. That way you don't get your homework and go, I'm still lost. That would suck. I don't want you that. Let's do it. 